students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the southern tip of Vancouver Island. I hope everybody is having an awesome weekend so far. I hope that you're being productive and staying happy and positive. Welcome Rahul, welcome viewers. It's good to see many of you already here. Students in this class, we are looking at IELTS speaking band nine part two on borrowing an object. The speaking section of the IELTS exam has three parts. Part two is the long part where you have to speak for one to two minutes on a specific uh, topic and we will be looking at that today. We will be practicing a band nine answer. Students, uh, this is a members chat class with interactive speaking. That means you have to be a member to join the chat, but of course everybody is welcome to watch and we will have an all chat class coming up in 90 minutes that will follow a similar topic for speaking part three. So it's a great idea to participate in this class. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, check us out there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. Both of these websites have tons of information for you to improve communication and English. And we will use uh, these websites today for the uh, speaking. The academic IELTS website looks like this with the blue background. Click this big red button to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access um, and uh, we are official IELTS test registration centers and certified agents. So you're in great hands with us. And right now, if you join, you can use this discount code that's just right there. Uh, use the coupon code Better Nouns 25 that's coming from our newest video on YouTube called Don't Say Things on Your IELTS Speaking. So you click continue and you get a 25% discount that you'll see up here in the green bar. Um, for general IELTS, check out this website here, gieltshelp.com. Again, click this big red button to join our premium package. Uh, welcome, this, uh, th oh, this is Anon, I get it. All right, welcome, this is Anon to our group of members. Send me uh, an email so I can hook you up with your perks. All right, everybody. So um, again, uh, if you want to uh, get our apps and access our materials through the apps, the apps link to the websites, you can get our apps, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. Uh, for Instagram, follow us, uh, IELTS underscore AE Help and G IELTS Help. Um, join our courses and begin learning for success. Hi, Laura. Hi, Osg. Good to see more members joining in. Again, remember to use the discount code. Um, students, so right now again, uh, we've got uh, speaking part two, followed by speaking part three. Then on Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, no class, but then back on the 16th, February 16th, with more classes starting on Wednesday. And if you have questions, um, just uh, send me an email right over there, um, adrian at aehelp.com. All right, students, so this is the cue card for the day. Um, speaking part two, we've got Henry just sitting kind of right on, or standing, <laughs> right on top of my head. Um, and uh, Henry's saying, hey, please uh, repeat. Um, repeat the information, repeat the English, the intonation. Um, this is our cue card. Our goal here is to understand and plan and speak. Okay, so we have to talk about an object that you borrowed from somebody. Okay, um, what is this item? 
What did you use it for? When and who did you borrow it from? Why did you decide to borrow it? And was it useful in the end? Okay, so you have to answer all the questions on the cue card. If you want to get a band 789, you have to answer every question on that cue card. Okay, it's very, very important. And it's extremely important that you stay on topic. Okay, so you're talking about an item that you borrowed, not an item that you lent to somebody, or not an item that somebody else you know borrowed, but an item that you borrowed. Okay, so we're going to have uh, some live speaking in a bit. You will be able to volunteer. But first, uh, let's take a little bit of a closer look at this question. Okay, all right. So again, everybody, if you have questions about IELTS, our products, our YouTube channel, you can contact me at adrian at aehelp.com, okay? And uh, this is Anon. Send me an email there so I can hook you up with your perks. Welcome, Baljeet. Okay, students. Uh, so here we go. Um, we've read the cue card. Now we want to identify the category. So the category of what this is. IELTS part two, usually one of five categories, person, place, object, event, or an idea. Here, we're talking about an object, okay? And when we talk about an object, there are some important pieces of information that we have to include. Uh, first, we should explain what it is. So it's appearance, okay? So what does it look like? Okay, if you borrowed a car, what kind of a car is that? What does it look like, all right? So that's the appearance. Uh, B, you have to explain its origin. So where does it come from? Did you buy it? Okay, in this case, clearly not. You borrowed it, so who did you borrow it from? Where does this object come from? All right, that's the next point that you have to include. Once we know where the object comes from, we're very curious about how to use it. So it's functionality. Okay, so how does it work? Okay, how do you use this object? If you uh, borrowed a Ferrari uh, from your friend, how do you drive that Ferrari? What do you do with it? Okay. And then a D, um, you want to talk about its importance to you. So why did you borrow that Ferrari? What did you use it for? Did you uh, go for a street race to win some cash for the weekend? Um, so what was the reason you borrowed that Ferrari? Did you go to uh, pick up your date with that Ferrari and take them to the theater? Um, was that the reason? So uh, that's what you want to include in that order. Now, Osg, um, it's great that you borrowed a sweatshirt from your boyfriend, but before we get into answering um, this question, uh, we want to take a couple more steps, okay? So first of all, we also want to identify the tense of the verb, of course, um, according to the question parameters. So should I use uh, past, present, or future in this response? What should I focus on? This is Ann and says, I borrowed a phone from my friend since I forgot where I left my phone. Um, yeah, so it's good that you're getting these ideas and this is what should be happening. These ideas should be circling um, in your mind. Rahul says, this is in the past tense. Bharat and Laura agree. Yeah, because it's in the past, right? Most of these questions, in fact, almost all of these questions are in the past. What is this item is kind of present tense, but then here we have what did uh, you use it for who did you borrow it from right why did you decide to use it 
uh, was it useful in the end? So we can clearly see that this response is mostly the past tense. And when we're talking about events in the past, we usually use the past tense, the past perfect, and the present perfect. Those are the most common tenses uh, when we're talking about the past. So the tense is in the past, okay? Uh, we identified the topic, it's an item that we borrowed, okay? So the topic is a borrowed item, borrowed object, all right? And now we think of some ideas, all right? So here we want to think of uh, two to three ideas that are good, okay? Um, so, um, Oz says, borrowed a sweatshirt from boyfriend. Okay. All right, this is Anand says, phone from a friend. All right, um, give me some other ideas, members. So what are some items that we commonly borrowed? Maybe you can think of some in real life. Uh, maybe you can make some up, okay? Rahul says vacuum cleaner from who? Maybe your neighbor? Vacuum cleaner from the neighbor? Um, me says motorbike from my sister. <laughs> Baljeet says a Ferrari for sure. All right. Raul says, maybe a ladder. I think we did a speaking about that once. Okay. Um, ladder from father. Maybe something like that. Osk says, uh, some lesson notes uh, from um, my classmates uh, to borrow, um, to copy them. Okay. All right, good. I think that's a really good one, um, Oz. I think uh, that's a very clever idea. So often students will borrow a uh, notebook with lesson notes uh, from their classmate um, to catch up on a class uh, for various reasons. Let's do that one today. I think it's uh, a unique answer. I think it's an interesting answer. And I definitely think that it has good potential to get a band nine. So this step in your part two, in your one minute preparation time, is a really good one to spend some extra attention on. Uh, because when you have a good idea, you're going to produce an excellent response for the cue card, okay? So let me kind of give you this extra piece of note here. So focusing on generating a great idea in the one minute preparation time is essential for getting a high band score on your entire speaking section, not just uh, in speaking part two, but the entire speaking section because it has a huge impact on your part three speaking as well. So it's essential for getting a high band score over seven on your uh, speaking section, okay? So make sure to spend enough time so that you can come up with these great ideas, okay? So let's choose this one for today, okay? A notebook with lesson notes from my classmate. That's what I borrowed, yeah, okay? I think that's a very clever uh, response. I know I've done it in university, I'm sure 
other students have done it as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if almost all of us at some point during our school years have borrowed um, notes from our classmate, okay? All right, uh, so the next step are to take some notes uh, for that one minute, okay? And they should be useful. So um, the appearance of these notes, okay? Now remember, this is where uh, you basically go through these elements of the object. So we know that we're talking about an object here. So we go through the concept of appearance, origin, functionality, and importance. And classroom notes are great for this. So you don't need to write appearance on your note paper, obviously. You should just remember that. So um, what do these notes look like? Okay. What do these notes look like? And you know, these days it might be digital notes, uh, which is fine too. I might go with a paper notebook. It could be a little bit easier, but up to you. You could do digital. I, let's do paper for uh, this uh, example, just so we're kind of all on the same page, right? So we all have the same idea. Baljeet says hard wound. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know about hard wound uh, ball jeet. Um, I would keep it a little bit simpler, so don't go overboard. Think about the appearance of the notebook, but mostly think about the appearance of the notes. Okay, that's what I would think about. So this is where visualization uh, really comes in handy. Okay, so it's a 200 page uh, notebook. Okay, I'm keeping it simple. I'm helping you out a little bit. Okay, Laura says, well organized. Right? So Laura says, well organized um, headings. So think about the simple, think about the low hanging fruit, right? Um, does everybody, hopefully you all know this expression in English. Um, so think about low hanging fruit. This is an expression means simple or easy ideas. Easy first, right? It comes from the concept of a fruit tree. You don't climb to the top of the fruit tree to get the fruit when there's fruit down below where you just need to reach and grab it, right? So 200 page notebook, well organized uh, with headings. Okay. Um, Highlights, right? Okay. Um, legible. Legible means easy to read. Okay. All right. This is on and says uh, contains lots of detailed information. Yeah. Okay. All lectures. All right, good. Okay, origin. Um, who did you get it from? Okay, so give me some information on who you got this notebook from. This could be anybody, you can make it up. I'm just going to answer this quickly and then I'll take a look at what you're saying, but really um, don't get uh, lost here. Don't spend too much time here. So uh, let's say it's my classmate. Aaron uh, sits uh, next to me, uh, straight A student, always in class. These are the ideas that come to me uh, when I think of origin, who I got it from. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, so Rahul, same kind of idea, good visualization. Rahul says, yeah, it's from my classmate who normally just sits beside me. Okay, Kofam says, my close friend in secondary class. All right, um, yeah, let's go to function. So why uh, basically did I borrow? So what's the function of this notebook, 
right? So um, let's say it's for biology class. All right. Um, and I bore it to catch up on missed lectures. Maybe I missed a week. Maybe I was sick. Okay. All right. Um, maybe I needed uh, this notebook to help me prepare for an exam. Also, maybe uh, it was important for me to learn about human anatomy. Okay, to be more uh, specific. So that's the function of this notebook. Yeah, Rahul, very good. See, you're thinking like me. Important revision for lectures just before the class. Okay. Bharat says it's for electronic science section 1A. Yeah, sure, Bharat. Okay, Osg says to take a biology exam in two weeks. I needed to study or else I was going to fail. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, let's be a little bit more ambitious, Osg. Okay. All right, the importance of borrowing this notebook needed to get high grade uh, for GPA, for university, okay? Um, maybe uh, you're looking for a major in biology. Maybe you want to be a doctor, so it's important information, okay? All right, good. So we've got all of our notes here. And again, you have to think uh, quickly and um, visualize the situation to come up with all of these, okay? You're writing quick, short notes in that one minute. And then uh, you can come up with a brilliant uh, response. Now, the next step is your first sentence. Okay. So look at the original question for this. Uh, use your notes, and this has to be before, okay? The one minute is up, all right? Keep it simple, students. So here, uh, again, we go back to the original question. It's IELTS speaking part two, cue card you get presented with this question the examiner will even ask you this so the examiner will say talk about an object that you borrowed and then you say i clearly remember borrowing um, a notebook from my classmate uh, aaron last year okay so it's not a complicated sentence all right it's simple i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve words in this first sentence it's not super complex i don't try to include all kinds of information from my notes i keep this quite simple clear with accurate grammar. The goal of this sentence is to start my answer fluently and accurately. Okay, this is super important, students. So the goal here is to start uh, quick, fluent, and accurate. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, Kofam says, today I would like to talk about an item I take from my friend. It's a biology notebook from Tuan, my classmate. Ko, a little bit, uh, Ko, a little bit too complicated. Okay, keep it sim sim more simple than that, so simpler, all right? Baljeet says, I remember last year my friend lent me notes for my power electronic lectures. <laughs> okay, Baljeet, good. Now, Baljeet, for the class, let's just stay with... Um, uh, the same information here, and then you can try that uh, for when we're doing live speaking here in a little bit, okay? But for now, just stick with what we're doing. All right, um, Rahul says, I would like to remember one of the most 
Students, be more concise, okay? So my feedback from what I'm seeing here in the chat is that um, you're giving um, kind of what we say loosey-goosey type of communication where it's like, I would like to talk about today, I'm going to explain about. Um, those kinds of responses tend not to get the highest band scores in the aisles, okay? So clear, concise, and direct communication get the highest uh, band scores on IELTS, okay? Do not start with uh, today, I would like to talk about, or um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about. Or another one of my favorites. Uh, well, I, I should, I'm being sarcastic here. That I don't. Uh, that I definitely don't uh, suggest is uh, this one. Um, well, I have borrowed many objects throughout the years, but the one I would like to talk about today is, and then off you go. Okay, um, so those are no's, all right? No on all of those. Uh, they're wordy, they're like, okay, this is memorized, let's get to it, come on. It's like where you're hitting fast forward on the TV, okay? Um, everybody clear on that? So direct, simple, accurate start. I clearly remember borrowing a notebook from my classmate Aaron last year, boom. You're off to the races. Your examiner knows that you're going to be accurate and concise. Everybody got that? It's a very important tip, all right? So clear, concise start. This is where I like seeing some thumbs up in the chat. Buckrut's giving me the funny emoji. Um, yeah, so this is where you, know, you want to be accurate, all right? All right, so now I'm basically using these notes here to complete my speaking. And if I have to look, it's okay to look. All right, Laura, me, very good. Thank you for the thumbs up. Yeah, it's good. Okay, you've got it, All right? And <laughs> Baljeet says, go hard or go home, guys. Yeah, um, I wouldn't necessarily say go hard in this case, Baljeet, but I would say be direct instead. Yeah, um, so here very quickly just to help my examiner visualize what I'm talking about. So this is a uh, standard 200 page um, lined uh, notebook um, uh, that I borrowed uh, from my uh, friend uh, and classmate or uh, and uh, peer Aaron for about a week uh, during uh, spring break in uh, my uh, grade uh, 12 year. Uh, for our biology class. Aaron is a straight A student and he takes excellent notes. He is always in the class. So the notebook uh, contained information for every uh, lecture. Uh, his notes were well organized. Well organized uh, with clear headings um, and he highlighted important information 
as well. His writing is uh, clear and legible, so I had no problems reading his notes. Okay, so here I'm basically taking my notes from the one minute, so the appearance, okay, and the origin, and putting that together um, to uh, introduce this object that I borrowed, okay? So now my reason for borrowing this uh, notebook, right, which is also its function, um, the reason I needed to borrow his notes is because I had missed a week of uh, school with uh, due to a uh, terrible flu and I needed to catch up on some uh, anatomy uh, lessons that I missed as we had an exam uh, coming in a couple of weeks that required uh, knowledge of this uh, vital information. In addition, I needed to make sure that I get a good grade in this class as it would affect my uh, university applications after graduation. Not to mention, I'm planning to become a doctor, so learning about uh, human anatomy is very important for my future, okay? So here again, it's no magic trick. I'm basically uh, just following my notes and also keeping in mind these questions on the card. What is this item? What did I use it for? When and who did I borrow it from? Why did you? Why did I decide to borrow it? Okay. All right. Crisley says, "I am really sleepy. I'm tired from work." Uh, Crizzle. Take a rest, rest up, and then study when you've got some energy. Osg, uh, not he writes every word that come out of our teachers, but um, he takes notes of all the uh, lectures and information mentioned by the teachers, okay? All right, Bakra, you don't need to give the weight of the notebook. That's a little bit awkward. So give key information, vital information. Okay. Kofam says it was essential for me to fill in knowledge that I missed during the previous week. Ko, notice my corrections there, Koa. Okay. All right. Uh, now, just to finish this off, right, let's not forget this last question. Many um, students do, and that's a big mistake. So this is the last question on the cue card. Was it useful in the end? Okay, so this notebook um, and Aaron's notes were extremely useful in the end because I scored 95% uh, on the uh, biology exam and there is no way I could have uh, done that without uh, these notes. This helped me to uh, get into a great 
university and that's the reason I'm now here taking uh, the IELTS so I can start my studies in September. Okay. And at this point, the examiner will probably say, okay, uh, your time is up. Now, uh, please put the note paper and the pencil to the side. I will take back the questions and we will continue with part three. So let's do this, everybody. Uh, let's speak and repeat. Okay, so here's the cue card and worry not um, because uh, you will have a chance to uh, practice this cue card with me in just a moment, everyone. So um, here we go. Uh, let's look at the cue card. Let's do a bit of repetition here. Okay, students, so repeat after me. Okay, repeat, bum, 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 speak. Okay, I'll start you off here. Okay, so three, two, one. Talk about an object that you borrowed. What is this item? What did you use it for? When and who did you borrow it from? Why did you decide to borrow it and was it useful in the end? Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I clearly remember borrowing a notebook from my classmate Aaron last year. This is a standard 200 page line notebook that I borrowed from my friend and peer Aaron for about a week during spring break in my grade 12 year for our biology class. Aaron is a straight A student and he takes excellent notes. He is always in the class so the notebook contained information for every lecture. His notes were well organized with clear headings and he highlighted important information. As well, his writing is clear and legible so I had no problems reading his notes. The reason I needed to borrow his notes uh, was because I had missed a week of school due to a terrible flu and I needed to catch up on some anatomy lessons that I missed as we had an exam coming in a couple of weeks that required knowledge of this vital information. In addition, I needed to make sure that I got a good grade in this class as it would affect my university applications after graduation. Not to mention, I'm planning to become a doctor, so learning about human anatomy is very important for my future. This notebook and Aaron's notes were extremely useful in the end because I scored 95% on this biology exam. And there is no way I could have done that without these notes. This helped me to get into a great university and that's the reason I'm now here taking the out so I can start my studies in September. Okay, your one or your time is up. Uh, please put the note paper to the side and let's start with part three. And then we start with part three, everybody. So that's what the steps are, everyone, to building a confident, effective part two uh, response. So again, remember to go through these steps, okay? Practice these regularly, all right? So what did I do here? First, I read the card carefully, all right? Then I identified that we're talking about an object. Uh, then I identified the tenses that I have to focus on, the topic of this card. We came up with some ideas and chose a really good idea to talk about, okay? Then some good notes following um, the points of an object, okay? And then the first sentence, getting that ready is very, very important. So that's what you have to do to get a high band score. Now let's practice a little bit of this, students. So um, I've done a bit of speaking for the last couple of minutes. Now it's going to be your turn. And uh, we're going to hopefully have some volunteers to practice this 
uh, speaking part two. So this is what you need to do to volunteer and try this uh, part two cue card, okay? So here are the steps for volunteering. Uh, number one, you register a free or a paid account at aehelp.com, okay? Number two, you log into your My Student account. Number three, you click on Student Partner Speaking. Number four, is a very important one, enable your uh, microphone in the browser, keep the window open, and then message me in the chat, okay? Uh, you will see me under uh, the uh, handle master, okay? Um, and just write, I want to volunteer. Okay, and then we're off to the races. So let me show you this, how to do this. Okay, and we'll take a couple of volunteers for today. So this is the website where you want to end up here. Okay, uh, this is aehelp.com, all right? And then uh, you click this big red button, the join now button or this green button, the try demo button, and you register, and then you have a My Student account, okay? In your My Student account, you click on Student Partner Speaking, right there, um, except that you're going to speak politely and be nice to everybody. And then you get into the chat interface where you will probably see lots and lots of students, and we see uh, Uche, Chukwu, Amrit, Mohammed, Tina, uh, Ozg Noor, um, and MD, and Khadija, okay? Now, um, Ozg Noor, is that you in there? Is that one of our members in there? So we're looking for members here, first of all, because this is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to try. If I don't have any members volunteering, I will take any of our viewers, okay? So, <clears throat> Osg, if that's you in there, maybe uh, try this or me, if you want to try this speaking part two. Don't worry about making mistakes, it's totally natural. I get that part two is challenging and it's difficult. The best way is to try. Osg says, yeah, that's me. So, do you wanna try, Osg? I don't wanna force you, but let's see, so. Would you like to try this cue card? Oh, you're calling me. Okay, that's that works. Hello, Osg. Mm, I couldn't hear you. you. You hung up. Okay, let me try to... Yeah, okay, let's see. Hi, Osg. Can you hear me? If you're using a mobile phone, try to use a headset because I can't hear you and you might not have your um, microphone enabled. Okay, Osg? So um, try to set it up with another student, maybe um, find another uh, member that's in here and then make sure that it works, okay? And then uh, we can do this after, all right? If you're using a mobile phone, it can be tricky because your mobile phone can really only use your audio devices on one piece of software like YouTube, for example, okay? So it does work better with a computer. All right, uh, here's me. Okay, sure, me. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Hello, sir. Hi, me. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Great. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for uh, volunteering. And, um, yeah. Good news, me. I can hear that your voice is more and more confident now that you're volunteering regularly, which is great. Okay, um, so me, um, let's uh, give this cue card a go. All right, uh, I'm gonna jump back here and show you the cue card. Uh, your cue card and your notes are in front of you when you're doing the IELTS, and it's a good idea to use these. So if you get stuck, if you're not sure what to say, look at the notes, look at the cue card, okay? Now, um, when you answer this question, uh, you can talk about 
uh, borrowing a notebook like we just practiced or if you want you can talk about borrowing a different item I think you mentioned that you borrowed a motorbike from your sister so uh, you could do that too if that's what you wish to do okay I'll let you decide I use the notebook ones because I think it's really good okay sure up to you all right I'll keep it on the cue card here so um, let's do this so talk about an object that you borrowed me, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. As my memory serves, I once borrowed a notebook from my class monitor, May, when I was in high school. It is a pink A5 notebook with a hundred papers and on the cover of it, there are a lot of uh, images of cats, which is her favorite uh, animals. And about her nose, she's uh, all of the lectures that she writes uh, were really well organized, and she put a lot of detailed information about the subject, which is English. And uh, she may is our class monitor, and and who who is really hardworking, and she's always be in in class, so she's cover all of the lesson on the. Uh, of the English and um, the reason why I uh, I had to borrow her notebook because uh, at that time I got a cold so I had to I, so I missed the class for five days and in order to review the lesson that I missed I borrowed her notebook on the weekends um, I had to review uh, the lessons uh, as I remember it was about related calls and tag questions but in order to review for the midterm test, I not only uh, just look at these two lessons, I, al I also look at the, uh, the, the other uh, lessons, which was uh, really useful for me because it has really nice handwriting and legible. And um, at, in the end, it was really helpful for me and I got, as I got 90% for the midterm test, uh, for the mid English midterm test, and it was thanks to her nose. All right, your time is up, me. I'm going to stop you there, and I will ask you to put your notes uh, to the side, uh, turn them over, and I'll take back the questions. And now we'll start with part three. Okay, uh, me, that was good. Okay, great, good for you, um, and you really got into it. All right, um, so you said, as my memory serves. Um, it's, I, I, I think that's unnecessary. It's a nice expression, but it definitely sounds like it's rehearsed and practiced specifically for part two. Um, so I would just start with the answer directly, okay? So I borrowed a notebook from my classmate and then get into it. And you said it's a pink notebook, A5, about 100 pages. Um, the cover has lots of cats or stickers of cats on it because it's her favorite animal. I thought that was kind of cute and that was good. It, it, it really helped me to visualize your friend's notebook and I could actually see it in front of me. Um, so that was really nice. Uh, watch your verb tenses me, okay? So I really want you to focus on your grammar accuracy because your fluency and your vocabulary and your confidence, it's all very good now. Uh, what's bringing down your score is your grammar accuracy, okay? Um, so you have to focus on your grammar to make sure that your band score goes up higher. I would say that your band score for this would be like a solid six to seven. So between six and seven, maybe a 6.5, depending on the examiner and how strict they are about grammar accuracy, okay? Okay. The most common mistakes with your grammar were with the verbs. So like here in the beginning, you said, I was borrowed. That's awkward because um, you're actively borrowing, right? So when you borrow, you are the agent of the action. You are doing that. So if you put was, then it sounds like it's passive. Um, and uh, it's really awkward because we never passively borrow uh, anything. We always actively borrow items that's what we do we ask for right like can i borrow your notebook so i'm borrowing it actively
okay? But that wasn't the only one. You made several other um, uh, verb uh, mistakes and you have to fix those. So me, this is what I want you to do. When you're practicing your speaking, do lots of part two. I think part two is very good for you to practice for this. Record it on your phone. Then listen to your answer, the recording, and type it down on the computer. And then check all of the verb tense mistakes, fix them, and then say it with the accurate grammar again onto the phone and listen over and over. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was I do these days. Yeah, that's what I do these days. Yeah, exactly. And then keep repeating. So keep doing that and it will iron out those grammar mistakes. Keep practicing and you will iron out the grammar mistakes. But otherwise, that was really good and it was a really good um, response. The other tip uh, I would give you um, to help your score and make sure that at least you get that 6.5 without the, uh, changing too much of the grammar. Um, the last question. So you said in the end it was really helpful for me because I got 90% on my English exam. I thought it was really late. Some examiners might not wait that long for that final answer. So you want to say that a little bit earlier. Um, you were really clever when you said it was about relative clauses and tag questions. That was really nice vocabulary. It was precise, that helps your grade. And then you said, uh, I also looked at other lessons in her notebook. I think instead of saying, I also looked at other lessons in her notebook, you should have started saying, in the end, it was really helpful for me because I scored a really high mark on this exam. So make sure to get to that last question a little bit faster, okay? All right, but that's the right idea, me. That's absolutely the right idea. So you have the right approach, so keep it up, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for volunteering, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Make sure to do something fun as well, okay? Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, you too. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Okay, so that was uh, me, and that was, that was definitely pretty solid, all right? Um, all right, this is Anun says, I love to practice my speaking, but I have to work this morning. Um, all right, okay, this is Anun. Thank you for uh, joining um, our group of members. And uh, yeah, give uh, me a, a thumbs up, everybody. That was awesome. She really challenged herself there, okay? All right, uh, Osnur, all right, did you fix the connection? Let's see. Hi, Osg. I still can't hear you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, definitely students check with others to make sure that you have a good connection and your microphone works, okay? Um, all right, let me check somebody else here. All right, Osg, please stop calling me. You have to make sure that it works. First, okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's uh, see Sarah here. Okay. Sure. Are you ready? Okay. Osg, uh, check with others first before you try to connect with me. Okay. It's definitely something on your end. So uh, you have some kind of a block going on on your end. Okay. All right. Hello, sir. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. I'm pretty good. Thank you. How about you? I'm good as well. Thank you for asking, Sarah. Where are you right now in this great big world of ours? I'm from France. From France. Right on. Yeah. Where about in, whereabouts in France? Which city? Where what? Which city? Oh, it's just it's Marseille. Marseille, you know? yes, I, yeah. I've i been to Marseille, actually. Oh, so. that's cool. So you visited the old port? I have. I have been to Marseille. Yeah, it's, be it's a beautiful city. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's do this uh, IELTS cue card. Okay. Have you been watching yeah. the class? Yeah, I was watching the class. Awesome. Okay, so you know what's going on. So uh, yeah, here is the cue card. Okay, I'm going to start you off and then give me a 
uh, an answer. Again, you can use what we have practiced in the class, so talking about borrowing uh, notes from a classmate, or if you want to challenge yourself a bit further, you can talk about borrowing uh, a different item, okay? Of course, thank you. All right, so here we go. Talk about an object that you borrowed. Your one minute preparation time is up. Sarah, please begin speaking. Yeah, thank you, sir. So I remember I remember when I was in the high school, it was my last year, and I was preparing to get a scholarship to study, complete my bachelor degrees in Canada. So I needed to pass the IELTS and get a great band in it. And uh, as non as, as non a native speaker of an English, I needed help. In my high school, it was an international high school, so I had a friend called Julie. And Julie, she was a perfect girl, and she belonged to, uh, she belonged the original to Canada. So she was like a good and native English speaker. So I asked her to write for me some notes and to borrow me uh, her notes, her notebook. Uh, so it may help me in my IELTS to pass it in a great vocabulary, and that was what she really does. Uh, she gave, uh, she gave what she really did. She gave me her notebook, it was a big notebook, about 200 pages and it was a cute one because she's a great girl. It was a pink notebook and uh, like full with flowers and these uh, pictures about the anime because she is uh, into that. And I took that notebook. Uh, I needed that notebook because I wanted, as I mentioned earlier, to, uh, to pass my IELTS and agree marks. I have been I have been being studying for the IELTS for a long while, and I needed the help. Uh, that notebook contains lots of vocabularies uh, with a great grammar, some classes. So I used it, and uh, and I decided to take it. As I mentioned, she was a native speaker of English, so that notebook helped me a lot to had a good band in English and the IELTS to pass my IELTS and I, er okay. I already I'm going to stop I you there uh, Sarah your time is up and now we will continue with part three please put the uh, note paper and the pen to the side and uh, now I will ask you a question related to your response and some questions on this topic okay so that's kind of how it happens and um, in uh, the IELTS exam that's nine out of ten examiners would do what I just did where they kind of interrupt you and then uh, go on with part three. Uh, the reason I interrupted you is because you started to get circular in your um, speaking. So you started yeah, to just I kind know. of repeat what you already told me second, third time and then okay, I realized okay, you're lost for ideas, you're repeating yourself, you're not giving me new information so I'm going to stop you and then let's get on to part three and uh, hopefully we can get some more uh, assessment of English. So. Okay, Sarah, uh, first and most important tip for your speaking, slow down a bit and organize yourself, okay? So I think you have very fluent English, I think you have great pronunciation, I think you have lots of grammar in English swimming around in your head, I even caught that uh, present perfect passive I believe that you were using there. Um, uh, at one point, which was all right. Um, however, you're making uh, quite a few grammatical mistakes and the information is kind of incoherent. Um, let me explain what I, what I mean by this in more detail. And because of that, it pushes your score down. So I think that you would score maybe a band six for that, but it could even be lower. Um, just because I'm confused by what you're saying and that really lowers the score when the examiner starts to get confused about what they're hearing. Um, so you said, so I remember when I was in high school and it was my last year. It took you a really long time to actually answer the question of what you borrowed. So you were speaking for about 20, 30 seconds before you actually told me that you borrowed a notebook. You must not do that in your IELTS exam, okay? You have to answer much more directly. Is that is that clear? Sarah, are you still there? Hello. <laughs> I think we lost Sarah somewhere along the way. I'm not sure. 
Sarah, are you still with me? I can I can see our connection still there. I'm not sure if timed out, but anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep giving you feedback. If you can hear me, that's great. Hopefully you can. Okay, so I'll finish um, what I'm saying here. So um, so it took a really long time to get to the actual answer, Sarah. So you need to get there a little bit faster. And then you were telling me that you were in an English class with a native English speaker. Um, and um, I wasn't clear exactly on whether this is an ESL class or this is like a first year college English class. Um, so there needed to be more clarity there. Um, and then you said that the notes were for the IELTS exam. So it was, so the answer was a bit confusing. Okay, so that's where you have to um, really focus uh, to make sure that you give clear structured uh, response okay use your notes and use the questions on the cue card to help guide you for that okay all right um, so uh, that was Sarah from France and I hope you have a great weekend Sarah even though I can't hear you I really appreciate your volunteering and putting yourself out there so speak a little bit slower and more structured focus on practicing that um, before your IELTS exam okay and thanks for volunteering bye Sarah okay so um, yeah uh, I don't know what happened there we kind of maybe the internet cut out or something on one end but uh, let me just say thanks Sarah I appreciate you volunteering Hey, all right. Um, Baljeet is asking, what was her band? Uh, Baljeet, yeah, I would say Sarah's uh, band at best would be a band six, but maybe even a band 5.5 just because of the lack of coherence. So it's difficult to understand what's going on. Okay, all right. 5.5, maybe six. Okay, everyone, so that's uh, part two. It takes a lot of practice. It's not something that we naturally do, okay? Uh, that's why it's so challenging for part two uh, because we don't give small presentations every day, even as a native English speaker. It's not, you know, uh, a typical daily conversation where we talk about a topic to someone for two minutes without stopping in a structured kind of way. So you have to practice this. You, even if you have great English, you must practice to get those high band scores. Um, students, uh, again, these materials um, were coming from our websites and we're using our website here. So uh, once again, uh, remember to join us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Use the discount code Better Nouns Twenty Five. Let me see. There we go. Better Nouns Twenty Five to get that twenty-five percent discount when you purchase the premium package. It's really, really well worth it. Thank you, members, for your participation. Thank you, Baljeet, Krizzle, Laura, Kofam, Ivy. Good to see you in the class as well. Me, thank you for your volunteering. Rahul, thank you for your contribution. Uh, this is Anand. Um, hopefully you have a great night there over in the Philippines. And uh, I hope to see many of you in the next class coming up in 30 minutes. Speaking part three, we will continue some questions on this topic of borrowing and lending. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now, also a port city here on the west coast of Canada. Bye, everyone.